my name's Aurelio Voltaire. I am not super rich and I'm not super famous, but I am making a career from my music. And if you wish to make a career from your music too, I think I can help you. Now, as it happens, I'm also an author. I've written a bunch of books and I've been wanting to write a book called The Future Rockstars Handbook, which I really hoped would be sort of revealing a bunch of the secrets to how you can actually make a living from your music. Totally scam free, just legitimately be a musician that pays the rent from making music. Uh, but unfortunately with my touring schedule and my recording schedule and all the other projects I have going on simultaneously, I realized it was highly unlikely I was ever going to get around to writing that book. Then I thought to myself, you know what, I could just point a camera at myself and just tell you some of these things because ultimately that's a lot easier and a lot faster than writing it all down and then editing it. So here we are. And today I would like to start out this series by broaching one of the simplest and yet one of the most profound hurdles that a lot of people face in beginning their musical career. Now, you're gonna think I'm making this up, but several times a week I receive one to a dozen emails from people that say things like, how do I get signed to a major record label? Or how do I get signed to a record label, period? And I'll reply, well, what's the name of your band? And they'll say, well, I don't have a band yet. And I'll say, okay, well, how many songs have you written? Well, I've never written any songs. So you've never written any songs, you've never performed live, and you want to know how to get signed to a record label? And it's so baffling to me. And when you get to the core of the problem, you find out that this type of personality, these kinds of people, feel that a figure of authority has to grant them the right to be an artist, whether that's a, as a musician or as an author or a filmmaker or an actor. They're waiting for someone to say, here, I dub thee a musician or I dub thee an author. And the truth of the matter is that you don't need to wait for anybody to tell you that you're a musician or an author or whatever it is you wish to be. You don't need for anybody to validate you. You already are that person. So the biggest secret in getting started is if you want the world to view you as an artist, you need to first just be that artist. You need to become the artist you want the world to see you as. It's really that simple. That does not mean walk around acting like a rock star douchebag with no credentials. That means write songs, play songs. Whenever your friends see you, if you have a guitar in your hand, if you have a piano in front of you, if you're saying, hey, check out my latest song, if, you're, if you say, hey, here's a link to my latest song on Bandcamp or SoundCloud or YouTube, uh, then your friends will eventually say, oh yeah, that's so-and-so, the musician. You need to first become the artist you want the world to view you as. It is really that simple. Now, if the reason that you haven't created any art yet but you see yourself as being a famous musician, a famous rock star or what have you, is because just the notion of it is very romantic and exciting, you know, just the thought that you might be on stage and thousands of people will adore you, but you're really not that interested in writing the songs or you're not actually interested in creating the work, let me tell you right now, I can't help you. So you might as well just stop watching this video right now because I can't help you because I don't know how to take someone who's not interested in art, who's not passionate about art, and turn them into a rock star. It's just, that's not, you know, I'm sure there are people out there who do that. I'm, I'm not that guy. So what I can do for you is I can tell you how to get out there, create music, record music, share your music, perform in front of people, and get your name out there and ultimately get to a place where you are paying your rent from doing the thing that you love. Be the artist you want the world to see you as. And in order to do that, you have to create the art. So if you want to be a singer-songwriter, you must be singing every day. You must be writing songs every day. If you want to be an author, the same thing. You should be writing it. Any author who doesn't write a sentence or a paragraph a day probably isn't really a writer. So that's step number one. Be the artist, make the art.
Now, one of the stumbling blocks that I find that some people have is that they're crippled with fear. And it's a, it's a fear I don't understand because I have a very childlike way of, of doing the things that I do. You know, I make music, I write books, I make films, I act in films. And all of this springs from this sort of childlike desire to play and to play make-believe in the case of filmmaking, in the case of writing books, it's, it's wanting to tell stories, make up stories. In the case of acting, it's wanting to play dress up. And it's all about make-believe and having fun for me. So I never really stop to consider that people might hate what I do. And I'm actually okay with people hating what I do because I always say nothing is for everyone. But to those people out there who have never written a song or never shared any of their songs because there's this crippling fear of, what if I put it out there and people don't like it? I'll tell you right now, you're not gonna get very far. In order to have a career, you must not only be creating the work, but you have to be presenting the work at all times. And let me tell you right now, if you haven't created the work or shared the work because you're afraid of being judged and you feel like that first thing that you put out into the world has to be brilliant, you're never ever gonna release anything because your first work is going to suck. I can almost promise you of that. And you know how I know that? Because my first work sucked and most people's first work sucks because we're not experienced we don't know what's good yet we don't have the skills yet at the very beginning when you watch the olympics and you see someone get a gold medal they didn't just show up at the olympics and get a gold medal they have been failing at that craft whatever that might be whether it's running or archery or swimming they've been failing at that craft for years and years and years and slowly getting better and better to the point where they're suddenly in the spotlight being handed a gold medal. So if you want to be that rock star where you're standing on that stage in front of thousands of people, you have to get through the crap to get to the good stuff. Now, you might get lucky and some of that early stuff might be brilliant. Uh, some of my very first songs ended up on my very first album, The Devil's Briss. And, you know, it's a little heartbreaking sometimes when people walk up to me and they say, that's still your best work because that was 12 albums ago. So I think, oh, am I getting worse? Am I not getting better? Um, so there is, a, there is always those gems that you know might come out of you at the very beginning, but you really have to dig for the gems. You have to dig through all the garbage to get to the good stuff. So create, practice, write, make the art because you love it. This is how it should start. It starts because you want to do this. I, you know what? I write songs because I can't not write songs. I write songs because I'm sad and it's the best way to cheer myself up. I write songs because I see something that's so ironic or tragic and I, and I want to put that in words somehow and, and I write a song about it. I write songs because somebody broke my heart and I'm so miserable and, and writing a song about you know, I don't know, tracking down their new boyfriend and chopping him up and sending each piece to a different country cheers me up! That's why I write songs. I write songs because I have to. So hopefully, your desire to be a successful musician also springs, originally anyway, from a desire to create art that is moving. Now, the second point that I want to cover in this short vlog about getting started is that you need to be able to communicate your art to people, right? Now, unfortunately for me, I always saw myself as a singer-songwriter, but I didn't play a musical instrument. Now, I, I came to New York City in 1984 with the belief that I was going to be a musician. I was gonna be a singer. Uh, and I played my first show in like 1995, you know, like 11 years later. Why did it take 11 years for me to start sharing my music with people? Well, I'll tell you, because people don't really take you very seriously if you communicate your music without instrumentation. So because I was a singer, I had a crazy look. I looked like the sixth member of Duran Duran. Yeah, that's me in 1984. Uh, so people would walk up to me all the time and they would say, wow, you have a great look. Are you a singer? Are you a musician? I'd say, yes, I'm a singer. I'm a so singer-songwriter. And they'd say, well, I'd love to hear your music sometime. I'd say, well, how about right now? They'd say, okay. 
And then I just look at them and go, Every day's the masquerade waiting for the fall. And they just completely be baffled and horrified. You know, this person like caterwauling at them. That was one of my first songs, by the way, <laughs> The Masquerade. Um, and uh, I realized that people didn't really want to hear a cappella singing. It didn't seem legitimate to them. So I realized I needed collaborators. I needed people who played musical instruments so that they could help me deliver my songs to the ears of the general public. And I learned a lot in those 10 years about collaborating. So if you don't play a musical instrument, here is what you are facing. Finding collaborators can be as simple as getting on Facebook or any other social media, Craigslist even, and saying, I'm looking for a guitarist, I'm looking for a drummer, I'm starting a heavy metal band. And you will get people who will respond to you. Uh, unfortunately though, when you are collaborating with people like that, collaborating with strangers, you're almost immediately going to discover some problems. People not showing up to rehearsal because they're irresponsible. People show up to rehearsal but they'd much rather smoke a joint or drink beer than actually rehearse. Uh, the worst one, of course, is people who want to collaborate with you, but the second they arrive, they have their own musical agenda. So maybe you want to make a heavy metal polka band, and maybe they want to make a hip-hop techno band. And trying to find people who actually want to make the music you want to make becomes very, very difficult. I am reminded of a band I tried to form in the late 80s with some very enthusiastic people. I thought we were off to a really great start. I wanted to call the band T-Pring, T-apostrophe-P-R-I-N-G, which is the name of Spock's fiance on one of the Star Trek episodes. And they all looked at me and the bass player said, T-Pring? What the hell does that mean? I's got T-Pring a date to the prom. That's a quote. Uh, I said, well, what do you guys want to call it? And the lead guitar said, we should call it Lick. It's like Kiss, but the next step. So there's a lot of that when you're trying to collaborate with people. There's a lot of not seeing eye to eye. There is a solution to that, a simple solution. I'm so sorry it took me 20 years to figure it out. It's called paying people. If you hire musicians, session musicians, or other musicians who are very, very good at their craft, and you say, I'd like to pay you to come and play guitar, they are pretty much obliged to play whatever you want them to play in whatever style you wish for them to play in and it took me many many years to figure that out but this is now how i make all of my albums you know if i need an accordion track on one of the songs i find a great accordion player and i pay them union scale i pay them industry standard standard living wages and a professional musician is going to be thrilled to come in and be paid well to play their instrument. If you are hiring musicians, you are the director and you can say, that's a little too funky, that's not funky enough, or whatever the case may be. You can guide the vision towards what you want it to be. I would highly recommend that if you don't play an instrument, you learn to play one. My years of working with collaborators and having disastrous results ended with my very last collaborator. He was a very talented uh, guitarist from Japan by the name of Kenji and he was the very last in a string of people who wanted to try to help me with my vision who I wasn't paying and I showed up in his home and I sang him a few of my songs and I don't know maybe he didn't think it was for him but he turned around and he grabbed this very guitar from off the wall I still have it. And he handed me this guitar. It was like right out of scene from Kung Fu. He handed me the guitar. He said, Mr. Voltaire, take this guitar and learn to play it, and you will never need anyone to help you with your music again. And he handed me this, and I thought, I can't play this. There's no way I can play this guitar. And then he gave me the best piece of advice I think anybody's ever given me. He said, on the way home today, stop at a music store and buy a book of tabs. For those of you who don't know, tabs are really handy for people like myself who don't read or write music. They're little drawings of where to put your fingers on a guitar. Ooh, I probably should have tuned that first. And he said, buy a book of tablature from your favorite band and learn to play some of their songs. I bought a Duran Duran songbook because of course when anybody thinks guitar, they think Duran Duran. <laughs> so, 
I learned to play a G chord, and I learned to play a C chord, and I learned to play a D chord, and an A minor, and an E minor, and a B7, which I guess they use a lot in Duran Duran songs. And it wasn't but a few weeks that I had grown familiar with where to put my fingers, and forget it, once I knew three or four chords, I wanted to write my own songs. And that same month, I wrote When You're Evil, and I wrote Ex-Lover's Lover, and I wrote Anniversary, and I wrote Underground, and I was completely out of control, having this power to suddenly be able to play my songs on an instrument. I played my very first live show only two or three months later after learning to play four chords. So if you learn to play an instrument like the guitar or the piano, when you play your songs for people with accompaniment, they will take you far more seriously. And of course, then you can really not be held back by the fact that you don't have someone to accompany you. So the best advice I can give you is the same advice Kenji gave me. Get a guitar, get a book of tabs, and learn to play four or five chords. And then you too will be able to regale people with your music. Let's recap really quickly. First of all, Stop talking about it and just do it. You don't need permission to be an artist. Just be that artist. You do, however, have to, number two, make the art. Can't be an artist if you're not making art. But, number three, don't be too precious. Don't worry about what people are gonna say. Just get it out there. Number four, if you need collaborators, go and find collaborators and pay them if you can. You'll be glad you did. Lastly, if you don't already play an instrument, learn to play one and you will need far less people to get out there and start playing those shows. And that's it. That is how you become the artist that you want the world to see you as. It's the first step. The next step is to get out there and to play your music live in front of people. And we're going to cover that in the next vlog, how to book your first live shows and what you should be doing at those live shows. I've been in this business for 20 years, over 20 years, I've been making a living at it for 20 years, and one thing that has always bothered me about the music business is the secrecy. It's as if people are afraid that if you know these things, you might become more successful than them, but you know what? I want you to know these things. I don't want you to wait 20 years to find out the things that I have waited 20 years to find out. So. I hope that I'm able to impart some of these uh, really honestly strange industry secrets. I've got a lot more that you are probably going to be really shocked by. So I hope I see you next time right here on the Future Rockstars Handbook. Until then, put your nose to the grindstone and make that art. If you're willing to work really, really hard and you're very passionate about your art, you will succeed. I believe in you. See you next time. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have ideas for what you'd like to hear me talk about in future installments, please leave them in the comments section below, and I will see you next time on the Future Rockstars Handbook.